flashback Friday TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Oh, this week though has just been one of those weeks for me. Like it's been emotionally exhaustive. It's been draining. I've been super ridiculous busy. Um, this was my first week back to school. Um, I know like in July, right? Stupid. But that is when my session started for college. And so I'm taking a really stupid, simple class. Like it's going to probably be the easiest A that I've ever got in my life. Um, but it's a really important class and it's basically just, um, strategies for online communication and how not to be like misunderstood in the, um, social media world, which ironically, um, is obviously a very big part of my life because social media is huge in my life. Maybe that's why I'm a social media marketing major. Like I'm literally going to school to get what I conveniently call a BS and FB, which is basically like my bachelor's of science degree in Facebook. Um, the technical term will be a bachelor's of science degree in marketing with a concentration in social media marketing. In, in English, it's a bachelor's of science in Facebook. I, um, with fingers crossed, will get to have a job where I get to sit and play on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and all aspects of social media on a daily basis. And that makes me really happy. Uh -huh. I mean, who wouldn't want that job? Seriously, who would not want that job? Who would not want to sit on their butt all day at a desk and play on Facebook and get paid for it? Thank you, social media. Um, I'm still on my movie high from last night. I went and seen the new movie Ant-Man. Oh my god. It's amazing. It's wonderful and I will see it again at least like 60 times. Um, give or take. Um, I really want to see it in 3D. Last night I seen it in RPX, which for those of you who don't know what RPX is, it's kind of like a sister company to IMAX. It's kind of like a toned down version of IMAX. The screen's like quadruple the size of a normal screen, but um, the sound is really really epic. Um, my RPX theater has these awesome reclining leather seats that like you can sit in and chill out and like bring a blanket and get all comfy cozy, um, which I love. And so I took full advantage of that last night. Um, but I really, really want to see it in 3D. I think that it would be a really awesome movie to see in 3D just because of some of the effects in the movie. Um, it would just, and, and the pace of the movie I think would be really awesome in 3D. It's got a great cast. It's hysterical as always. Um, I mean, Marvel movies are typically known for having their little bit of humor, um, which I love. And I giggled incessantly throughout it last night. It was just really, really good. It has a fantastic cast. Paul Rudd does an amazing job as Ant-Man. Um, it's got Michael Peña in it, which is hysterical. I love him. I think he's fantastic. Every movie I've ever seen him in is just amazing. Um, it's just, ugh, I could rave for hours and hours and hours, but we would be here all day. And we are not here to talk about my movie addiction or the fact that I've had, like, the week from you know what or my degree in college. We are here to talk about GA Flashback Friday, which is where I recap one of our past episodes of Ghost Adventures. And today we are going to a really awesome location, the Old Washoe Club and the collar mine. Um, now, typically I give like a little brief history of the location. However, this time we are gonna give a little bit of history on the guys past with the Washoe Club and the collar mine. Um, now, the guys had never been to the collar mine before. This was kind of just part of their lockdown to back up the Washoe Club. However, the guys have a very deep history with the Washoe Club. In 2004, when they did their original documentary, this was one of the locations they went to in Virginia City, Nevada. Now, Virginia City, Nevada is an old mining town with a lot of history and a lot of death and a lot of darkness. Um, as always, it, an old mining town, people come there to get rich and get rich fast, and it just ends up being full of drama and full of destruction because you have issues with the mines and you have issues with money and violence and the list goes on and on and on and then you just become this town of darkness and despair um, which is kind of what Virginia City had become. Um, the old Washoe Club has a lot of history. It's very 
it was built to be kind of like the Millionaire's Club, kind of like that elite status building. With that comes a lot of power, and with power comes greed, and with greed comes violence, and with violence comes death, and then you have the Washington Club. Um, in 2004, when the guys were there originally, they got the holy grail of paranormal evidence. They got the full body apparition in the second floor ballroom. Nick had walked into the room, and then as he walked out, an apparition, full bodied, feet, torso, head, all of the above, was seen walking in front of the camera directly behind Nick. Now, apparently, these spirits have a bone to pick with Mr. Nick Groff because they don't like him. Um, Mark and Debbie Constantino, which we, who we know now very well, was kind of new to the show at the time. Um, they are paranormal. They're EVP experts. They can get the clearest EVPs I've ever heard in my freaking life. Like, it is freaking believable. They had went and done an investigation a few months before the guys showed up this time. And they had gotten some EVPs that were cray cray cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs nuts. Um, they got... EVPs saying, I hate Nick, um, Nick Groff, Zach, Nick, coming, they're scaring me. What the crap? Um, <clears throat> it was just unbelievable. Like, they got these sick Class A EVPs. They are wicked to hear, and they gave Zach and Nick and Aaron, like, the chills. Um, so apparently whatever is at the Lost Show Club does not like Nick or Zach at all. Especially Nick, which, can you blame him? Oops, did I say that out loud? My bad. Moving on. Um, so this was a two-part lockdown. Um, they began at the Collar Mine. Now, they had never been there before, but they had heard stories of it being insanely freaking haunted, as most mines and places of this, of the such are. Um, so they go in there, and they do a very short lockdown there, um, just a three or four hour lockdown. They have them cut off the ventilation system to this mine, which is probably not the best idea. Um, and they kind of pay for it. The air gets pretty heavy, but they get some pretty cool evidence. Um, they get an EVP, um, that says help, but it sounds kind of like Zach's voice. Um, and then they get, um, this, they bring, they bring out the kind of like the eco box, like the, the box, the word database box, and they are kind of standing on a ladder and they get some words about, help fell through um and what's really interesting about that is this particular instrument um only brings one word at a time and this one actually did two which was really really crazy and it kind of shows that um with enough energy i think that a spirit can manipulate any piece of equipment um and then aaron feels sick and kind of nauseous and just kind of gets that sinking feeling and then they hear mining sounds it was like pretty basic lockdown like they got you know they got some evidence that can back up the claims that it was haunted but you could tell that the guys really wanted this was really just a filler for the big show which is the Washoe Club um now the minute they walk into this place and lockdown begins they start getting evidence these spirits know that they are there they know that they are back and they do not like it they are ready to raise hell because they are in there five seconds and they hear unexplained talking upstairs and the only way that they could get any sort of like contamination would be from the bar because um, it is an actual functioning bar like it's not like an abandoned building the bottom half of the Washoe Club is a functioning bar um, as part of the historical town that Virginia City is now um, and there was nobody there. They made sure that everybody was gone, everybody was cleared out, and so it was legit spirits. They know they're there. Um, they instantly start smelling cigar smoke, which is a very common thing in the Washoe Club, and it's kind of linked to a spirit that they believe um, had murdered people there. And so he's not a nice man. Um, and then they kind of bring out one of the first spirit boxes, um, which is really cool. It is completely different from what we're used to seeing with like the SB7 or the SB11 spirit box. Um, but it's the same concept. They had the white noise and the frequency. And they use that and they get 
Um, this is where they actually get the help that um, comes through the spirit box, but it sounds like Zach. They get um, the word trouble, and then they bring in Mark and Debbie to help them with their investigation because Mark and Debbie seem to be like the parent, like the EVP magnet. And when I say that they can get EVPs that are crystal clear, they can get EVPs that are crystal freaking clear. Um, and this was no exception. They got an EVP that said, Nick, go home. Another, I hate Nick. Um, they were asked if they followed Nick home, and they said yes. Um, they got one that said, we're not scared of them. And these are all Class A, without a doubt, this is what they're saying. You could never hear an EVP in your life, and you would know that this is what they're saying. Um, the Washoe Club was kind of one of those EVP magnets. Um, they were very communicative. They were very interested in speaking with everyone and they want to be heard and I think that something evil kind of lies within the Washoe Club um, there's something there that goes beyond an old miner or a millionaire banker um, what I don't know but they kind of toward the end of their lockdown on the static night vision camera they had caught a voice that kind of sounded a little demonic in nature um, Whatever is at the Washoe Club, they're very strong spirits. They have an ability to communicate. They're very intelligent. Um, they may not know they're even dead. I think that um, it is just this breeding ground of haunted acti of paranormal activity. And a really good point was made in this episode in the sense that prior to the guys coming to the Washoe Club in 04, when they did their documentary, um, uh, this had not gotten a lot of notoriety. Virginia City, it was kind of known to the locals, but it was not known to the world. And then, you know, here comes Zach, Nick, and Aaron with their cameras and their equipment and their provocation, and they kind of poked the sleeping lion a little bit. And when that documentary took off, it kind of opened the door to a zillion the other people coming in and now everybody's coming into the Washoe Club and kind of poking the sleeping lion and I think it's made it a more sinister place. Zach even said it feels so much different now than it did in 04. Um, it feels darker, it feels more evil, it feels more sinister and I think that all boils down to the fact that so many people have come in with lack of experience, wanting that quick pump of adrenaline and that quick proof of the paranormal and then now they're playing with fire and they don't know what they're doing and I think the spirits maybe kind of blame Zach, Nick, and Aaron for that in a little way um, because before they came along it was quiet, it was peaceful, they could kind of haunt as they pleased and now they get poked all the time. Um, I can't say that I blame the spirits um, but I thank them because they really give us a lot of really awesome evidence. Um, and now the Washoe Club is kind of one of those places that is enshrouded in ghost adventures history as being that play, like one of those places that is kind of on, um, Zach, Aaron, and Nick's list of places that they don't mess with. And it's just one of those places where they're kind of on like the spirit shit list, <laughs> to be honest. I think the spirits, I think the spirit world has their own little list of, you know, their own little hit list, and I think the Spirits of the Washoe Club for sure have targets on Zach, Nick, and Aaron's back. Um, it's a really awesome location. It's a really cool place. It's given the paranormal world a really awesome piece of evidence, and I think that the paranormal world's kind of grateful for that, because whenever you get the Holy Grail, which is um, a full-bodied apparition of a spirit, then you kind of give that place a big clap and a big pat on the back for being awesome. So that is all I have for GA Flashback Friday. I will be back on Tuesday for GAQA Tuesday. Yes, it's coming on Tuesday. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, have a fantastic and wonderful weekend. And if you have not seen Ant-Man, go see it. I realize like it just opened today, but you could have not been a slacker and you could have went and seen it last night like I did. Um, but go see it. It's worth the money, I promise you. It's worth like the what the bajillion dollars that you spend to go see a movie in the theater. Go, stop what you're doing right now, buy your tickets. It's convenient. Go to fandango.com, buy your tickets on Fandango, 
you can do it on your phone, you can take your phone to the movie theater, you don't have to wait in line for your ticket, I don't want an excuse, eat before you go so you don't have to buy a thousand dollars worth of food at the concession stand and go watch Ant-Man, it will not disappoint you, I promise. Okay, rant over. Have a great weekend, guys. Much love and happiness. Bye!